بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ربي شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحلو لقضة من لساني يفقه قولي I'm here Dr. Mudassir Shabazz Associate Professor Sahara Medical College Narawal and uh, uh, today we are going to discuss uh, about the skin, fascia, superficial and deep fascia of the lower limb in the previous lecture, we have discussed about the general introduction about the lower limb and we have seen that uh, what kind of uh, similarities are uh, having the lower limb with the upper limb and also have come to brief knowledge of the uh, bones and joints and muscles, nerves and the vessels of the lower limb. And that was a brief discussion. Now, we will start now onward about the detailed discussion of the each uh, thing which we are going to discuss in the lower limb. The skeletal system will be discussed with you people by some other teacher. Now, I'm here to discuss with you the first thing that is the skin and fascia of the lower limb. The skin uh, of the fascia, uh, skin of the lower limb just like the other part of the uh, body of the uh, skin of the other part of the body but at uh, certain points is it, it is different such as at the sole of the foot if you feel it it is very much harder and thicker as compared to the other parts of the body and uh, at some places the skin is very much adherent to the um, uh, bones where you can feel the bones Otherwise, basically, the structure of the skin is the same, and there are certain force which appears in the uh, skin uh, due to the uh, flexion or due to the other parts of the body, such as the gluteal fold, which is uh, on the posterior side under the gluteus maximus. Anteriorly, it is the inguinal region. There is a crease, inguinal crease, which is uh, at the level of inguinal ligament, from the anterior spinalic spine to the pubic tubercle, so there the inguinal fold. Here we can, uh, here we can see. Here is the inguinal fold, and uh, there other folds are developed where the joints are present. Uh, so it's the skin. The main purpose uh, to know about the skin is that the cutaneous innervation uh, by touching the skin that we can check the uh, innervation or dermatomes of the skin. So it is very important when you are studying the skin uh, uh, the, uh, of the any region, so you have to know the uh, crease line, lines and the dermatomes. So first we see that the, here the anterior part of the thigh which is supplying by the certain cutaneous nerve above starting from above is a femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve as the only on the most upper and medial part is the ilioinguinal nerve supplying the upper and medial part of the thigh and then coming down <coughs> uh, there is on the lateral side there is the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve these are the branches of the femoral nerve and then the, the, there are the intermediate cutaneous nerves and then there is the medial cutaneous nerve of the thigh. So if you will check here, you will check in the femoral nerve. On the uh, medial side of the thigh, there is the cutaneous branch of obturator nerve. And here is the marked area, uh, which is area of the femoral triangle, which is supplied by the femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve, ilioinguinal nerve, and cutaneous branch of obturator nerve. Below the, near the, just above the knee, here is the saphenous nerve which is coming out of the front of the thigh and it will supply the um, leg and there is the infrapatellar branch of the saphenous nerve which is playing it. And here if we go to the posterior side of the thigh, we are seeing the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh and that's the L2, L3 and then there is the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh. So on the medial side we see obturator nerve supplying the medial 
and below this the medial cutaneous nerve of the thigh from the above so below if we see as a whole the picture of uh, the cutaneous nerve supply so this is showing the anterior side and this is showing the posterior side on anterior side we have seen these branches below there is the saphenous nerve which is supplying the anteromedial part of the uh, leg and up to the big toe on the lateral side we are seeing lateral cutaneous nerve of the calf and here is the superficial perineal nerve on the lateral side of the foot sural nerve these are supplying the front of the leg and on the posterior side we see here is the cutaneous branches of subcostal nerve most laterally then we come if we come medially see l1 l2 l3 and branches of posterior mi of s1 s2 s3 they are supplying the gluteal region from the lateral side iliohypogastric is coming into is to supply the lower outer quadrant of the gluteal region the medial quadrant lower medial quadrant is a perforated perforating cutaneous nerve uh, and perineal branches uh, branches of the pos posterior cutaneous nerve, nerve of thigh they are supplying this area here is the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh then on the medial side here is the above the cutaneous branches of obturator nerve and the here low down is the medial cutaneous nerve of the thigh on the lateral side of the leg we see lateral cutaneous nerve of the calf and here in the midline is the sural nerve a very important sural nerve and going up to lateral malleolus on the medial side is a branches of the saphenous nerve which is playing in the foot there is a branches of lateral plantar nerve and branches of the medial plantar nerve so here is the cutaneous nerve supply of the lower limb and if we check this we can confirm which part of the uh, is uh, deficient or damaged or not so we can check the nerve supply of the aluma here you can see we can uh, the segment of the spinal cord involved can be checked by checking these cutaneous nerves and similarly there is, uh, there are the in the superficial fascia there are the veins superficial veins which are very important in the leg so it is very important to know about the veins superficial veins of the leg so there are superficial veins in the thigh region there is great saphenous vein that ends at this phenofemoral junction which is at present at the saphenous opening that this a uh, great saphenous vein is opening into the femoral vein because it is long one that's why, why is called as great saphenous vein uh, posterior uh, on the posterior side, uh, side of the lower leg there is another vein that is shorter one and that small saphenous vein that saphenous vein opens into the popliteal vein inside and that's why it is this phenopopliteal junction and there are in this side here are the perforators which are connecting the superficial veins with the deep veins these are very important to know about and uh, we will discuss in the when we will discuss the superficial veins of the leg we will discuss these veins also so there are two veins superficial veins great saphenous vein and small saphenous vein and there are perforators which are connecting these veins with the deep veins of the leg so regarding the skin there is superficial lymphatics that drains mainly the skin of that area and that drainage area is superficial t tissue everything which is superficial to the deep fascia so in the lower limb including the buttock except posterolateral part of the calf posterolateral part of the calf this one this area uh, which drains to the popliteal lymph nodes a lower abdominal wall below the umbilicus so these are superficial inguinal lymph nodes which will be draining the whole of the leg and is the external genitalia is also drain that not includes the testes testes are not included only the skin 
then the perineal and then the uterus corona these lymphatics are drained by superficial inguinal lymph node so skin of the lower limb is drained mainly by the superficial inguinal lymph nodes and here we are seeing that there is a horizontal group which is lying horizontal superficial inguinal lymph node and there is a vertical group of lymph nodes which is lying vertically at the inguinal vertical to inguinal ligament the superficial one is lying parallel to the inguinal ligament the horizontal group and the uh, vertical group is just vertical to it this is superficial inguinal lymph nodes the skin is drained by here and these obviously will be connected to the deep inguinal lymph nodes through the superficial to the deep here we are seeing there are popliteal group of lymph nodes popliteal group of lymph nodes that drain posterior lateral part of the cuff into the popliteal just like you can compare it with the upper limb that uh, in the upper limb we have seen there were group of epitracheal epitracheal lymph nodes uh, in the cubital fossa in the cubital fossa there were present the trochlear lymph nodes and they are comparable to the popliteal lymph nodes in the lower limb which are draining only posterior lateral part of the calf okay then comes the fascia so when we see the fascia of the thigh there are two types of fascia one is superficial one and other is the deep fascia so superficial fascia and deep fascia so is a superficial fascia number one is the uh, mainly the um, fatty layer of the fascia which is and here lies the cutaneous nerves and also superficial arteries and veins in the superficial fascia so two types of fascia one is superficial and other is deep here we are seeing the superficial fascia facial fascia and here is in the superficial fascia is a opening which is named as saphenous opening because of here the great saphenous vein opens into the femoral vein we'll see where it's located and how it is located here is shown the branches of the veins branch superficial branches of the veins draining into the great saphenous vein that is the superficial external pudendal then the superficial epigastric then the superficial circumflex iliac and also here as a group of lymph nodes are also shown here is a horizontal group of lymph node of the superficial inguinal and here is the vertical group of the inguinal lymph nodes and here is the branches of the femoral artery which are similar to that of the superficial veins that is the superficial iliac artery and vein superficial epigastric artery and vein superficial external pudendal artery and vein here is shown so in the superficial fascia is basically the uh, divides into two parts where fatty and the fish uh, superficial and deep now here we see in further detail that the fascia of the thigh in two layers superficial and deep and superficial is further divided into two superficial fatty and deep membranes in this slide we are seeing here this is the layer superficial fatty fascia but here is the line which is seen here is the membranous part of superficial fascia which is more concerned with the abdominal part that you will study when you will study the abdomen fascia of the abdomen here that will be more important than the superficial but in the thigh it is very smaller one and it's just below the inguinal ligament the deep membranous layer fused with the deep fascia of the thigh 
here it is fusing with the deep fascia of the thigh so it's not extending beyond that so we can say that actually the below this at a fusion there are only two layers superficial fascia fatty and deep fascia of the thigh but above this the there is because this attachment is below the inguinal ligament so we have to mention it that the two layers superficial and deep membranous of the superficial fascia the other one is the deep fascia which is also called as fascia lati fascia lati means it's a stocking light stocking like that if you wear stockings over your foot or over your thigh so uh, tightly they embarrasses your thigh or lower limb so that's why this is called a fascia lati here again shown the superficial fascia of the thigh that's the membranous layer of superficial fascia of anterior abdominal extend into the thigh and is attached to the deep fascia fascia lata below the inguinal ligament so actually the membranous layer of superficial fascia of the thigh is not the part of the thigh fascia but it is coming from the abdomen the membranous layer of abdomen the superficial mainly composed of fatty layer of superficial fascia on the anterior abdominal extend into the thigh and continues down over the lower limb without interruption so it's mainly the fatty layer the deep layer membranous layer of superficial only up to the below the inguinal ligament interfuses with the deep fascia that's very important point to remember so here comes the deep fascia this deep fascia of thigh is strong and closes the thigh like a trouser leg it is called as fascia lata its upper end is attached to the pelvis and the inguinal ligament or around the pelvis means the iliac crest and then the on the uh, inguinal ligament and uh, here posterior will be the sacrum so is uh, is attached to the inguinal ligament and the pelvic brim all of the pelvic brim on the lateral side it is thickened to form the luteal tract or here is on the lateral side is thickened to form the <coughs> luteal tract ilio from the ilium to the tibia ilio tibial tract so ilio tibial tract is nothing but the thickening of the deep fascia of the thigh in the gluteal region deep fascia form the sheath which encloses the tensile fascia lati and gluteus maximus muscle so here in the gluteal region this deep this deep fascia will divide into two parts and when and close within it the gluteus maximus and tensor fascia lati muscle here will be tensor fascia lati here is shown tensor fascia lati muscle this one and here is the gluteus maximus so the deep fascia will divide into two parts and enclose this tensor fascia lati and this gluteus maximus muscle so these are the modification of deep fascia so what about further about deep fascia is that the modification there is a gap in the deep fascia which is named as saphenous opening this gap is in front of the thigh just below the inguinal ligament what why this gap is here this due to great saphenous vein has to enter into the femoral vein so this is named as saphenous opening okay and this gap where is saphenous opening is present is filled with connective tissue which is named as cribriform fascia although it is this is not a fascia but it's a loose connective tissue that fills the gap of saphenous opening but it is named as cribriform fascia now here is the showing the saphenous opening this is important clinical clinically to know about the opening in of the saphenous opening where the uh, in case of varicose veins you have to ligate it so you should know its location it's located 4 cm below and 4 cm lateral to the pubic tubercle and it is around about 2.5 cm long 
and 2 cm broad with a slung axis directed downwards and laterally. So, here downwards and laterally, it is when you have to palpate it, first you have to palpate the pubic tubercle, here is the pubic tubercle and you have to go 4 cm down and lateral, 4 cm lateral to the pubic tubercle, there you will find the vein. Saphenous opening. Here again shows, shows the ovoid opening, ovoid hyacinth that is the saphenous opening and here will be the pubic tubercle and here is the vein. The, this is a gap in the facial artery and here is the great saphenous vein is entering into the femoral vein and here is the inguinal ligament attaching from the anterior superior ilic spine to the pubic tubercle and here you can see the deep fascia attaching to the inguinal ligament, deep fascia here and below this the membranous layer here round about I think so here round about here will be the attachment of the membranous layer of the deep fascia, fusion of the deep fascia and membranous layer of the superficial fascia they fuses with each other. Here we again see the opening of the and here is the attachment of the deep fascia and in the gluteal region and is now sleeves all of the. Here are again you are seeing the two gaps one is over the patella to communicate with the bursa and here is another below where is the ligament of patella is uh, attaching on the tibial tuberosity. So, if you go down, fasciality is a deep facial investment of the musculature of the thigh, is analogous to strong, extensible and elasticated stocking, proximally around the iliac crest and inguinal ligament, and distal to the bony prominence of tibia, continuous with the renamed deep fascia of leg that is the crural fascia. So, the same fascia of the thigh, but down in the leg it will be called as crural fascia. The depth varies considerably according to the thigh. thigh thickness along the super lateral aspect of the thigh where it is, arises from the facial condensation of gluteus maximus and medius and thick around the knee where fascia receive reinforcing fibre tendons of quadriceps. Facial investment thinnest where uh, covers the adductor muscles of the medial side of the thigh. So, it is thick where over the quadriceps, but thin where over the adductor muscles and also thick over the gluteus maximus and medius. Okay. So, facial artery, this is, these are the uh, uh, qualities of the Again, here is showing the iliotibial tract that is the thickening of the deep fascia and here the tensor facial lati muscle will be uh, attaching to the iliotibial tract. Now, from the deep fascia of the thigh facial lati, certain septums they move inside and attach to the bones inside femur and similarly in the lower leg and they will be called as intermuscular septa. So, in this way it divides the uh, region into different compartments. So, here if we say here is the lateral intermuscular septum and here is the uh, that the medial inter medial uh, the uh, medial intramuscular septum and here is the posterior intramuscular septum. So, between this septum lateral and this posterior is the posterior compartment, here is the adductor compartment and this will be the anterior compartment of the thigh. And so, you are seeing here that it is investing, is investing the muscles of the thigh the fascia is investing the muscles of the thigh. So, these are the modification of the uh, tension, uh, fascia lati 
and that is the iliotibial tract and the intramuscular septums and uh, again here is the showing the tensor facial lattice muscles and is insertion into the iliotibial tract and its main action is to flex the hip and internal rotation abduction of the hip so it is more concerned with the stability of knee joint and some action over the hip joint but it is because it is uh, i have shown it here because it is attached to the fascia lati of the deep fascia of the leg deep fascia of the thigh below this the deep fascia of the thigh is continuous with the deep fascia of the leg that is called uh, the crural fascia and it is attached to the patella plural ligament tibial tuberosity and crural fascia attached to the tibial condyles and head of fibula inferiorly so at the ankle joint deep fascia is thickened to form the reticula reticula through which the under which the uh, muscle tendons they pass to reach the foot and uh, so these are the modification of the fascia actually it is a continuous fascia here it will be called as crural fascia then at the ankle joint it will form the reticula retinacula of the uh, ankle joint which will be covering the muscle which will covering the tendons and in the foot in the sole of the foot then similarly when when we have seen in the palm this the palmar fascia palmar aponeurosis here the plantar aponeurosis will be formed by thickening of the deep fascia but it is quite thicker than in the upper limb that is the palmar fascia so that's the plantar fascia is quite thicker than the palmar fascia and distally it is fibrous digital sheath attached attached to it and also transverse metatarsal ligament which are obviously because continuous putting stress over the foot during walking so it becomes more thicker as compared to the uh, palmar aponeurosis palmar fascia or palmar aponeurosis here is the plantar fascia or plantar aponeurosis will be formed by the thickening of the deep fascia so here are the about the skin and fascia of the lower limb we have seen in the skin it is the more more important as the marking uh, that is where the bones can be palpated where the uh, the lines are present that is the gluteal line and inguinal lines they are present and also uh, in the, the more concern are the superficial cutaneous nerves which are supplying the skin so that can we can check the sensation of the Uh, skin and then the superficial veins which are which are located in the superficial fascia and veins and arteries and then the superficial lymphatic then we have discussed about the deep fascia which is a uh, uh, fascial lati and we have seen it's the thick is modification thickening fascial lati there that is iliotibial tract laterally and uh, the opening in the uh, fasciality that is saphenous opening and intramuscular septas and other modifications of the deep fascia at the knee joint that is the crural fascia of the leg and at the ankle joint that is the retinacula of the uh, around the ankle joint holding the tendons and in the foot we have seen the thickening that is the plantar fascia so this is about the skin and fascia of the lower limb thank you very much inshallah we will discuss further accordingly